Einstein presented ingenious uh, ideas supporting the idea of a real world out there. But Bohr shot every one of them down one by one and gradually convinced his colleagues uh, of his point of view. Uh, today, however, most people still believe there's a, a, an external world out there. This issue, of course, is ancient and, and predates uh, biocentrism, which, ex which, of course, explains why one view and not the other uh, has to be correct. So let's consider a little of the, of the physics, the real experiments. Consider the famous two-hole experiment. When scientists watch a particle go through two holes in a barrier, it acts like a little bullet and logically goes through one hole or the other. But if you don't watch it, it behaves like a wave and can go, and can go through both holes uh, at the same time. So why should a particle out there change its behavior depending on whether you watch it or not? And of course the answer is that reality is a process that involves your consciousness. Or, and again, there have been many, many versions of that experiment. Uh, consider Eisenberg's famous uncertainty principle. If there was really a world out there with particles just bouncing around, then we should certainly be able to measure all of their properties. But you can't. So, for instance, a particle's exact location and its momentum can't be known at the same time. So why should it matter to matter or to particles what you decide to measure? Again, the answer is simple. The particles aren't just out there. Again, we can go on and on, one more entangled particles you've probably heard of. How can particles possibly instantaneously be connected at opposite sides of the galaxy out there in, in violation of, of the speed of light? Again, they're not just out there. Space and time are tools of our mind. They're forms of, of animal understanding. So this is the problem in a nutshell, is, is that we look at the world like a chickmunk or a squirrel. The squirrel opens his eyes and sees the, the acorn and it's just miraculously there. He grabs it and he scurries up the tree without any further thought. And we humans are the same. We wake up in the morning and the world is just magically there. We go through life, we drool completely oblivious to what's going on around us in the world. But experiment after experiment shows that not a single particle out there exists with real properties until it's observed. So it doesn't take a genius to realize that, this, that reality is a process, again, that involves consciousness.